Can we can we switch gears real quick and talk about the current game? Snake, uh, I don't baseball? know if you saw Yeah, baseball. I don't know if you saw this. But today, Anthony Rizzo is playing for the Yankees, playing against mm. the Go Tigers, Zach's team, yeah. Zach's yeah. boys. Mm-hmm. They went four man outfield, complete infield shift, no bodies on the left side. T- Toronto well, just did this to him too. Toronto did four man outfield to him and Gallo, and then the Tigers mm-hmm. just did the same thing. I I didn't I didn't see those two examples, but I did see a four man outfield against somebody yesterday or the day before. Um, look, I, if the shift is allowed, and I don't know all these advanced analytics, like I, I'm not I'm not sitting in those meetings. We're not in those meetings. You you obviously get some of that information, right? Yeah, but. There's a long discussion on on why they're going to do that, right? Like they are they are almost certain that that's the best option, right? Or else they wouldn't do it. So I understand why it's happening. Do do we like it? No, I mean I th- I think it's kind of ridiculous, but and I think you would agree with me on on this that if if our job is to try and get try and get 27 outs and we feel like that's the best opportunity to get that out, then I guess it makes sense to do it. Right. As, as a pitcher, you turn around. Oh yeah. Four man outfield, nobody on the left side against Anthony Rizzo. You feel good about that or do you feel bad about that? Against Rizzo? No, I don't really feel that good about it because how many times have we seen him, you know, kind of choke, choke up three inches and, and take his little base hit to, to shortstop. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are they banning the shift next year? That is a is that, proposed. It's is proposed. A proposed okay. from the commissioner's office. The idea of banning the shift. Okay, and I know as a position player, and we've had these conversations with Rizzo a lot. I know you guys probably want to ban, but do you not? Do you not also think that that looks? It looks a certain way if if the best players in the world aren't able to make certain adjustments because yeah because of that like and that that's and i'm on the fence dude like i'm not i'm not completely on the side of of uh figure it out you're a big leaguer but i'm also not on the side of being able to put four guys here or five guys here right so i'm somewhere in between um but like when i'm talking to when i'm talking to kids it's like and they're thinking well why don't why don't they just change their approach a little bit and go and try this. So, and I, I don't, I don't know what to tell them because that's the way I feel. I mean, what, what do you got on that? Well, you threw a gazillion. What, dude, what am I going to I didn't, I didn't throw way, throwing I didn't. 97 with the fucking 90. You're, you're, the... You were throwing 95 throwing from behind a righty's head. That it's, it's, it's hard. It's it, really it, fucking hard. I understand that. I understand that, but you know, with with two strikes with two i'm not telling you every time if you hit those la- those fucking lasers at 114 miles an hour to shallow right field and the guy throws you out at first or he catches in the air over and over and over why wouldn't she try fucking try something else <laughs> here's here's my here's my thing i got two things okay. one i think we played with the great schwarbino for a long time a guy like schwarbs like the game is more exciting in, as a whole, the game is more exciting when a guy like Kyle Schwarber hits a ball 115 miles an hour. And it's a hit. And it's a hit. I don't disagree with you on that. Um, here's, here's my other Averages thing. will go way up, right? Averages will go the up at least go way some. Up. My other thing is I don't know that the best athletes on the field are making the decision to go play 25 feet into They're the not. Outfit. I think They're that's not. a decision that comes from – Somebody upstairs. Well, I mean, come on. You don't think. You know that. Well, yes. But my, my thing is, like, say, think about one of the best infields you ever watch play. Like, I'll go maybe, like, Javi and Addy playing together when early, like, those yeah. two guys, yeah. watching those two guys up the middle cover as much ground as they possibly could. Not be positioned perfectly for every play, but cover as much ground as they possibly could and show off their athleticism. Like that's fun to watch. So it if you say, if you say there's two guys on one side of the field or everybody has to have their feet on the dirt, I think then you still at least reward somebody for hitting an absolute bullet. But 
you get to watch those guys cover as much ground as they possibly can. Like watching Javi or Andrew Alton Simmons or Jose Iglesias play shortstop, like that's a fun part of the game. No, I agree with you on that. So where, where do you draw the line? Like do you say, like you were just mentioning, like you have to have a foot in, in, in the dirt or you have to be this far from, from the edge of the dirt? on the back of the on the back of the infield like can you do you do you say okay for outfielders you can't play past like this gap or like where then it just it seems to get overly technical and that i mean look that's that's a conversation that that you guys as a union are going to have to have with the league right and, and iron that out it's not going to be an easy one but like i said before i, I kind of see both sides of it i really do um and as a pitcher, I, I can I, I agree with you too. Like I, I don't I don't think that that's that's a bad a bad idea. And if we're trying to grow the game, we we want more fans in it, right? To watch. You're right. A, a ball that's hit 115 off the bat, people want to go nuts and and assume that that's a hit, right? Um, but then you have to admit there is there is that part in there, like as a baseball purist, that would like to see guys try to make a slight adjustment. And I know it's hard, but, you know, if I know that I can throw you here and you're going to hit it there every time or 40% of the time, you know, because now you're, everyone's trying to win the game at all costs. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's just, it's fucking weird, man. It's weird though, because know. like Rizzo, like, you know, we can said, or even Schwarber, they could bunt every time, right? And like, and like, oh yeah, I'm making an adjustment. But then the front office and whoever's gonna be, like, hey, we're not paying you all this money to lay a bunt down. They tell them to to slug, right? Right? Like you, you're you have your guy with a high slugging percentage that hits the ball over the fence. Like we want you to still try and do that. And I do, I understand that too, right? Like, yeah, you have your. There are some lineups that have thump from like two to seven. Right. So then the, maybe you can do it in those lineups. Not everyone has that. Right. So we have our best guy lay a bunt down and then we have a guy that hits four homers behind him. Right. right. Doesn't make a, doesn't make a lot of sense. And with, with the stuff that's on the mound, that, that people are featuring on the mound today, it's absurd. Right. Like watching what Hunter Green's doing now. And I mean, there's starters. I mean, I just watched, um, you know, McGill for, uh, for the Mets, right? Who's in place of, of DeGrom currently. I mean, he's throwing 95 to 98. That's, and that's like a, just a routine. That's just a, that's just a, a right-handed starter now. If you come to the park and a right-handed starter is featuring 95 to 98, that's like your, well, we got another, that's your average righty. Like average that's, righty. Mm -hmm. that's what you're seeing right now. But it's, yeah, I do think like, the baseball purists and the guys that have played the game better around the game, like you understand the, what it takes to make that adjustment to, to wait on a change up or an off speed pitch late in the count and like shoot it to left or like even take like kind of a gross swing, but manipulate that ball to where people aren't like guys that have been around the game and seen it appreciate that fact. I don't know that our casual fan of the game that's tuning in to watch the Cubbies is like appreciates everything that goes into that thing where I do know like the casual fan that tunes in or like sees Sunday night baseball, like when somebody hits a missile in the four hole, like they understand that. Yeah. Well, what are, what are your thoughts on trying to uh, trying to build the knowledge of even like the, the, the common fan, right? Cause and look like Cooper, Cooper's 10 now. Right. And we had a, we had a team deal tonight. We took the kids to high five, which is like a main event. We had a team meeting and we showed us some, some videos because they're having trouble with uh, like pre-pitch routines. We got kids standing like flat footed as the ball's crossing home plate. I'm like, you fucking guy. Like if the ball, there's a foul ball and I don't see a reaction, you're out of the, you got to go. You got to go. Right. But my, my point is baseball is a very technical game from like little league. and there's so many facets of the game that you have to kind of understand with football. Yes. It's a complex game, but it's, you kind of know what you, what you're saying, right. Um, basketball, fairly simple game, right. 
so it, it's how do we how do we increase the knowledge of those fans right rather than just like flipping the because not many people are just going to flip the game on that might like baseball and watch nine innings that's true right like it's but the but the length of the game to me that's always been like a weird uh argument because football games are over three hours long and there's right? not that there's sneaky not that much action in those and games. there's not that much action if you go to a game you actually understand that like i i don't i haven't been to a lot of football games but the ones i have been to i'm like there's a shit ton of breaks, right? They disguise it pretty well on TV. Yeah. But but I, I don't know. I agree with you, but I disagree with you in a way. Wouldn't it be amazing if if you were out there on the bump or I, I think like the Manning cast is a good example. I know they're trying to do it with A-Rod and whatever, but like if we you should do were, that, we should do that. And, and John Boy Media should do it. Tom, Tom, yeah. Tom. But if you if you could have guys talking through the thought process, talking through the game, like if you if the if the fan knew everything that went into outfield positioning and infield positioning and the conversations that Jay Hay have Jay Hay and I have on a regular basis about mm-hmm. the different parts of the outfield that we're going to cover and what we're going to do pitch to pitch and the way the wind is moving at Wrigley and like all these little things that guys process in 15 seconds in between a pitch like everything that goes into the game and i think that's like the job of former players now as people get into media as there's more options as espn's expanding as john boy media is um you know things like that are growing it's former players and guys who have played the game to not just sit in the booth and give the play-by-play but to really get into hey this is all the stuff that's happening behind yeah. the scenes during the course of a game that makes it so interesting. And it's the reason why guys that yeah. play it love it so much. Yeah. You know what? And, and, and nothing against the, the color guys or the broadcast team, but I think it just gets a little stale, you know, it's just like, and there's an art form to it. Right. For sure. It's like, not an like, easy job. What, like what, what Ben Scully did for, for his entire career. He was, he's a master at it, but I, I think it's, it's a little outdated in, in a sense. And that's a great comparison. Like what Eli um, and, and, and Peyton do. I mean, that, that would be great for our sport. Why right? isn't would, baseball doing like a hard knocks, like throughout spring training or even throughout a season, like guys are on the cusp of making or breaking the team. You know, like I, I think that especially baseball fans would love that. Like there's baseball fans who know everything about every single team yet. We're still dealing with like blackouts, you know? And it's like, I think there's just so many avenues we could take as a sport to truly grow it, and we're not exploring many of them. I agree with you on that. Ian, what do you think as far as the player's willingness to to partake in something like that? Do you I think, think it's different in baseball or, I, or what? I do. This is my theory. I think it is different in baseball. I think there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. There's a lot of moments, and there's kind of that – It's fading, but there's still that old school mentality of don't ask me to like, I'm already playing 162 games. I'm here every fucking day. Don't ask me to do anything else. But here's my theory. My theory is if you asked every team to do it for a week, one week, I'm not asking for the whole season. I'm not asking for the whole spring. I'm asking for one week. We have cameras on you. You could, every team could do it. Every team would do it and it wouldn't be that big of a lift every team for a week and you and you kind of once the playoffs come yeah then it's back and you have to like deal with it that's part of being a playoff team but like for a week throughout the season every single team gets filmed and then that turns into a show and then once the playoffs hit they get to i mean they're they're doing even like the mic'd up sunday night thing now for during the game and it's pretty cool like i mean it kind of feels like it's spring training but i mean it's cool to see that side of players during a game yeah, I, I like it. I mean, and I right. think the I think what's cool too is like the conversations that guys will have at first base, right? Or, yeah. you know, with 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 the opponent or the middle infielders, you know, shooting the shit with the guy in second base. Um, and look, I the old school way of baseball was like you know like kind of fuck the other team, yada yada. But it 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 is that way. But we're still like we're still friendly. Right. Like 
I want, we want to beat your fucking ass, but like, you know, Hey, what's going on? Like, how you doing? Like that, that's fine too. At the same time. I mean, right? for, for 95% of the guys in the league, maybe more, maybe 99%, like you have the ultimate amount of respect. Yeah. Everybody has those one or two guys that mm-hmm. they don't get along with or, or have a little beef with, but like you respect every guy's journey because it's almost exactly the same as yours. Like every guy has had some, some path similar to yours or, or you understand the work that goes into getting to that level. And so there is that mutual respect. Like when you watch a guy, it doesn't matter if it's your teammate or your best friend on the bump. Like when you watch a guy stay on a fucking two, two backdoor slider and hit a bullet to left, like coming in, like, Hey man, that was a sick swing. Like there's that respect because you do it 162 times. Right. And that's, that's a great point. And that's something I tell people all the time, right? Like might not like each other, certain guys. Right. But everyone that I respect, everyone that has a uniform. Right. Like, and you know, there, there's going to come a time where, you know, I'll do, I'll do some work in the game and look, criticism is, is a, is a natural part of, of playing a sport is especially playing a sport at the highest level. And whether there's criticism or not, it's just evaluating the performance. But at the end of the day, like I respect the hell out of everybody who gets to wear that uniform because we all know how fucking hard it is to perform at a high level uh, you know, playing, playing this game. Right. So I'm, I'm with you on that. I think that's like the part of the game that was, or has been taboo that like lifting the curtain on that and being like, look, there's mutual respect across the board. Guys like each other. A lot of guys have played together or against each other at different points in their career. And like, they are friendly, but they go out, and compete all the time like i think that's perfectly fine and like should be embraced amongst the game right right i do too i think maybe where it's not is like fans diehard fans of certain teams seeing a guy kind of chumming it up with another guy you know it i guess it might not look the best in their eyes but you know come on like we're still doing everything we can to you know to beat the team you don't like even though we're yeah. friendly with with another dude right like it was you know, you heard the old stories of um, like Jeter and A Rod or whatever playing on certain teams, going being caught at dinner with players from the other team. Like, how many times do we do that? Like, we, you know, we're doing that all the time. Right? Yeah, especially if you play with guys and like they're your buddies. Like, of course, right. whenever you're in the right. city, you're gonna get to see everybody. Hundred percent. Snake, have you ever yeah. used? Have you ever used Manscaped? Why are you asking me that? Am I <laughs> extra hairy right now? No. You're beautiful, I but I don't know if you know. No, I haven't. We have, I haven't. Does it work? Give me one. It does. It does. <laughs> we have, we have a uh, a code code compound uh, for twenty percent off I'm not and done. free I shipping. Need you to send me one at manscaped.com. We can send you one. <laughs> we'll send you one. All right. But they they have this. Uh, I don't know if you know this. They have this this trimmer and it has a light on it. It's got a light. Yeah, but like, are you doing in the dark? Yeah, you could do in the dark. It's unbelievable. All right. Guys, you know about Manscaped. We always talk about Manscaped. April is not only the beginning of baseball season, we're in it, but it is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Manscaped is doing something really cool. They've partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Manscaped is committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men ages 13 to 35, giving support for fighters, survivors, families impacted by testicular cancer as part of their We Save Balls initiative. That's really awesome. We love Manscaped. We appreciate their support. Check them out. It's a great time to do it in April with Testicular Cancer Awareness Month going on. Get 20% off and free shipping with code COMPOUND at manscaped.com, 20% off, free shipping, code compound. Hey, okay, you want to see something that's really bothering me? Can you see my eye? See this? What do you got going? Dude, it's swollen. I don't understand. It's swollen. You got a little, you got a little sty? You see that? No, I don't even think it's a sty. It looks like I got stung by a fucking wasp. Can you Can you see this or not? I can see it. No, I can see it. Dude, I, it's unbelievable. So the bottom, this eyelid, right, the bottom one was swollen yesterday, and then I wake up this morning, the top one. 
What's going on in Austin? Huh? I, I don't know. I'm 36 now. It's not, and then this one kind of hurts. I don't, I don't understand. Bernie's All like apart. freaking out. Bernie's freaking out. She's like, it's a sty. It's, there's no fucking sty. I don't know if it, I got bit by a spider, but it's just, it's bad. It's bad. I need help. But you look great. My body's great. Body's great. <laughs> It's from the no, what is nose down now? What is now it's from the, no, she, now it's no. from the nose down. I'm falling apart. I am. I need help. I need a pedicure is what I need. You're a big pedicure guy. Well, I mean, I got into it. You know how Joe was. It's like, uh, I think David is probably the first one to do it, right? Painting his toenails. Really? Well, so we had to, if you wanted to wear sandals on the flight, you had to paint yeah, your yeah. toenails, right? And then it kind of started with that. And then Palmer, you know, she she's uh, she loves pedicures. She wanted to pick pick polish to to get dad's nails done. And like you can't say no to her. I, I don't want her turning into a stripper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> did you ever do like did you, you ever do manicure with your to make sure your fingers were good? No, I do my own. No, very very like precise with especially the middle finger. Right, I would always get like a slight blister here if I cut the yeah. nail too short. So mm-hmm. I don't want anyone so touching. So you don't want anyone touching. No, I take, I take, and I will, you probably saw me cut them in the clubhouse all the time. Yeah, yeah. Right, filing them down. Right. And you did a lot. Of, you did a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the paraffin. Thing? Yeah. The, the wax. The wax. Oh yeah, I'd walk around just, just waxed up. It's nice. It's nice. Well, check yeah, it out. Yeah. I don't but know if got- there's. I don't know if it's still in the budget in Chicago there, but it should be in the corner in the back of the training room. Yeah, I think they took it out. I think they after after you left, they got rid of the Pilates stuff and they said we don't need any wax. I mean, David's office is really the. I mean, they they made that room for me and they got rid of it. It's sad. I I miss that room dearly. I know, I know. Well, in the off season, you can come to my house. We'll do it. Yeah, I'm very excited to do that. Hey, thanks for coming on and hanging out with us. Are we done? Do you want to talk about anything else? No, I, I, gotta, I, I gotta wake up at five. So yeah, I thought let's, I thought let's do it's it already eleven forty five. So I tell you this. I get up I get up about five thirty every morning. I have a little bit of time to myself. I gotta I gotta watch this eye. I'll let you know how the eye is in the morning. Yeah, but me. I make I make the kids like uh like New York strip or uh like ribeye and eggs and pancakes almost every morning. We sit down, we have a nice, nice little family, family breakfast together take them to school and then I start my day. So, uh, it's, it's a fucking hell of a morning. What a routine. You're awesome. Wow. Yeah. And then I, and then I go straight, you know, straight to the gym. Bernie plays tennis. Um, we meet up for lunch and then we, you know, we, we keep it rolling. We got baseball practice tomorrow and Thursday. It's a big week. 